Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will see what is Windrose diagram and what are the different types of plotting a Windrose diagram. So this lecture is a continuation of the previous lecture what we had that is about the runway orientation. We ha we had seen up to wind coverage and the Windrose was pending, right? So we'll begin with this. What is Windrose and how do you need to understand that? So to begin with the theory part. For the airport, the average wind data of five to 10 years period are collected and represented graphically in the form of chart, which is known as Windrose. You can see a small diagram here, right? So this picture, what you can see, it represents like a rose, hence it is called as Windrose. And to plot this, you need to take around five to 10 years of a wind data that you usually get from the Indi Indian Meteorological Department. And with the help of that, we need to plot this. The diagram is given the name Windrose because of its irregular shape resembling a rose. The study of wind rose helps in determining the most suitable orientation of the runway. So why this has to be plotted? So after plotting this, we are going to get an idea on which side my runway has to be plotted, whether it has to be north, northeast towards this, or let us say from northwest to east, southeast, right? So you don't have an idea. So after plotting, we come to a conclusion. It also useful for estimating the runway capacity and also uh, it helps us to plot how many number of runways are required and where exactly the runway and how much capacity the runway should be those things we are going to get here so one assumption usually what we do is that it is assumed that the duration of a wind for any direction covers an angle of 22.5 degree that means suppose if this is my direction let us say from this is one direction and this is another direction. So in between this, no, this is usually 22.5 days. This is the assumption what we try to do, right? In this way, if you try to locate everything, you are going to get 360 degree out of that. Yeah. So now coming to the types of this. So we have two different types of uh, plotting it, plotting of a windows diagram. First is a type one showing the direction and duration of a wind in the type one. And in the type two, you're going to get the direction the duration and the intensity of the wind. So how is that? We'll try to see. I'll show you one image for that. Yeah. So if you can see it, you know, it's written here, typical wind data. So if it is a type one, then we are going to get this particular table that is wind direction. And also we are going to get the total percentage in each direction, right? This two we are going to get in first type in the second type that is type two wind diagram, you're going to get the wind direction, the total percentage in each direction and also the intensity of the wind. So we'll go back to that once again, let me show it. Yeah. If you observe it from here, type one showing the direction and duration of the wind, you can see it here, direction of the wind, that is wind direction. And uh, the other one is duration of the wind, right? Yeah. So this is the duration of the wind. Similarly, in the type two, you're going to get direction, duration and intensity of the wind so that you can see it here. Wind direction, then you're going to get the intensity of the wind. And the last one is the total percentage in each direction. These are two ways of plotting. So first in this lecture, we'll try to see the type one that is showing the direction and duration of the wind and how it has to be plotted. Yeah. So this is how that uh, diagram is to be plotted. We'll see that, but first we'll try to understand the theory part. So as we, as I mentioned in type one, we are going to show the direction and also the duration of the wind. The radial line indicates the wind direction and the each circle represents the duration of a wind to a certain scale. What is trying to tell? See, we have this circle here, isn't it? So the radial lines, what we have, they indicate the wind direction, this radial lines, this radial lines, what you can see north, south, west and east then northwest to southeast, then north of northwest to south of southeast. All these are my radial lines. They're going to represent the wind direction for me. And each circle, you can see a circle here. You cannot see the circle here, but in this case, you can see a circle here, right? This is first circle, right? This is another circle, what I have. Then I have another circle. So each circle represents the duration of the wind to a certain scale, right? This, things, this is the first thing that we need to understand. Yeah, then how do you plot this? Uh, first, we'll go through this uh, explanation. 
yeah see so once that is done next you have to do this marking anyhow this is north this is south this is west this is east right and then we have uh, northwest then we have southeast and then we have southwest we are northeast at all I, i'll be explaining all these things in a uh, animated way as of now just try to concentrate here and as, as i mentioned the distance between these two right is always 22.5 degrees that is already assumed now concentrate here in the wind direction north in the wind direction north or let us go with the northeast yeah so if this is the northeast let us say this particular thing in the northeast direction what is the total percentage in the each direction what is mentioned here 1.93 right so you can see here this is my northeast here and in this much area of 22.5 degree 1.93 percent of the total time right 1.93 what you can see here this much wind is blowing here in the same way if you come to the southwest portion now if i go to the southwest my southwest is somewhere here and you can see a number 1.33 and here it is written that is in this much portion 22.5 percent so here 1.33 percent of the total time so in this way these things will be located so this is the importance of plotting all this graph here first point next how do you plot all this you can see a kind of a contour lines here isn't it so in this way how do you plot all those things we'll try to see that yeah So, once you have done the marking with the north, south, the west, the east, and all. Next, what you are supposed to do? You have to draw these circles here. You have to draw these circles in this way. So, I drawn one circle here. Then I am going to draw another circle here, right? So, in this way, you have to try to draw the circles. So, once the circles are drawn, next, what we have to do? You look into this part. This is the total percentage in the each direction. So each circle, I'm going to give a name as let us say this is three. Okay, I'll I can start from anything, but I'm giving three here. Next, this circle, I'm giving a number of six. Similarly, this circle, what I have, I'm giving a number of nine. Similarly, this circle, what I have, I'm going to give a number of twelve. Right. So once these things are done, next we have to do the plotting of this. So how do you do the plotting of this? First, look here. The wind direction is north here, right? So now search north here. So this is my north direction. Good. So in the north direction, what is my corresponding total percentage in each direction? It is six point one zero, right? So that means I need to go in this direction. Okay. See, this is north now for me, right? Yeah. So in the north, the value given is how much? The six point one zero. So this circle represents three. This circle, what I have now, it represents three. And the next circle, what I have? This circle, what I have? It represents six. But what is the value I have? It is six point one zero. That means it is going to lie somewhere here, right? So this is that point what I have. This is the first point. Similarly, now come to the north northeast. So where is north northeast? This is my north northeast. That is this particular line. This particular line what I have? This is my north of northeast. And what is the value? Four point one five. So if this is three. And if this is six, if this circle represents six, and if this circle represents three, what where should this four point one five lie in between this three and six? So let us say it is lying somewhere here, right? So that is why if you can see a line has been connected from here to here. First I got it here. This is six point one zero. Then I got four point one five, right? Next similarly come to this northeast. Okay, I'll try to clear everything. It will be clear now. Come to northeast. So where is my northeast? So this is my northeast, right? What is the value for the northeast? It is one point nine three. If it is one point nine three, if this is three, if this is three, one point nine three will be somewhere in this place, isn't it? So corresponding to northeast, one point nine three is somewhere here. This is that point. So that is why we started from here six point one zero. Then you came to this. This is your four point one five, and now you came to one point nine three, right? Now we came in. Next, I'll take last one thing. Uh, I can take with the south. Okay, I'll go with the south one. So in the south, what is given? This is my south. This portion is the south now. And what is the value given? Six point one zero. Six point one zero means so this circle. What you can see now? This circle. This circle is six for me. So the value given is six point one zero. So if the value given is six point one zero, then it has to be here somewhere right it yeah 
uh, I think they have made a mistake here. If you look at the south here, right, corresponding to the south direction, you have to mark 6.10. But instead of marking at this particular stage, instead of joining this here, I joined it here. I think they have made a mistake. We'll try to verify with some other value. I'll go with this option, right? We'll try to see whether they have done a mistake or not. Yeah, I'll go with this west northwest. So where is my west north northwest? So this portion is my west northwest. Corresponding to that, I should get 10.75, right? So this is my nine and this is my 12 circle. Yeah, this is correct. See, if this is my west northwest, this particular area, hmm, and if this circle represents my nine, and if it is 12 here, then it has to be in between this. So that is why you are getting a point here. Let me verify with one more value now. I'll go with the southwest now. So corresponding to the southwest, I'll delete everything. Yeah, corresponding to the southwest, I should get 1.33. So where is my southwest? This is my southwest here, right? I should get 1.33. So 1.33, of course, this is three circle here. 1.33 will be in between this. That is why they have plotted it here. Yeah, for the south, they have done a wrong. I mean, they have made a mistake here, maybe a printing mistake, but don't follow this, right? So once you do all these things, no, finally, you're going to get a graph something like this after connecting each and every dots. So once you connect all those dots, finally, you try to see which is the longest path. Now for me, from west, northwest to east, southeast, you can see it here from west, from west, northwest to east southeast this is the longest path and along this i am going to do the orientation of my runway right so this is the importance of plotting a windrose diagram so whatever i explained the same thing they have put it in the theory part you can go through this from the figure west northwest that is west northwest and east southeast is the best orientation for the runway for this type of windrows windrows does not consider the effect of crosswind so one uh, disadvantage of this particular uh, uh, type 1 method is that it will not consider the crosswind component what we had seen. So for that we have to go for the type 2 method. Similarly, whatever we have understood, let me put it in an animated way. Let us say this is the circle what I have taken. So these are the marking what I have done. So this is north, south, west and east. Then we have this as northeast, southeast, southwest and northwest. Now this direction will be which one? This will be northeast, but since it is close to the north, we write this as north of northeast. Similarly, if I come to this direction, this is close to the east. This is east, right? Since it is close to the east, we consider this as east of northeast. Now, if I take this one, since it is close to east only, but is it, it is in the southeast zone, we consider this line as a east of southeast. Suppose if I take this, this is southeast. If I take this, what will happen? Since it is in southeast direction, but now this line is close to south. So hence it is called as south of southeast, south of southwest and same the logic. So with this logic, these are the circles what I'm going to draw. So once you draw the circle, you try to, to give the name to that. Let us say this is three. You can give anything. This, this you have to plot with the help of a scale. But here I've taken three. You can take even four and eight, 12, 16 and so on, right? So three I'm giving here for this circle, right? Next, this circle I'm going to give six, this I'm going to give 9, this I'm going to give 12. So once these things are done, next what I'm going to do, whatever point I get from that table, no, I, I'll try to plot it everywhere. So once that plotting is done, finally try to see which is the longest path. Now to find the longest path, I feel from west, northwest to this portion east, let us consider in this particular case, is my longest path. So along this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to orient my runway in this So I'm going to orient my runway along this path. In this way, I'm going to keep my runway. So in this way, you have to understand this windrows diagram. Yeah, you can see here one uh, practical case. See, wind data they have taken. The wind data that is the direction, duration, and intensity of wind were obtained from the Indian Meteorological Department in the Navi Mumbai. So we have taken the wind data, and these are the directions what they have. And this is the windows, the prevailing wind. And this is how they have plotted the graph for the windrows diagram right so in this way you need to uh, carry out this windrows diagram and this is a type one what we have discussed in the next lecture we'll try to discuss uh, type two where we try to take care of the uh, crosswind component also so we'll see you back in the next lecture thank you